Religions and traditions are layered upon one another in the land of Ireland. The ceremony of Beltane marks the start of summer and is sacred to the ancient god Bel or Belinus, the shining god. Shown here near the traditional bonfire lighting on the hill of Ushnik, a royal seat of Ireland's high kings. As Christianity spread over Ireland starting in the 400s, ancient religion combined with the new creating local saints like Saint Bridget, who many believe is a combination of pagan goddess and saint. Likewise, many church sites like the one we explore today were likely built on top of or next to ancient religious sites and centers in layers from the Neolithic until today. Thank you for joining us on this exploration today, which is going to be shorter than normal as we are currently overseas recording new lost places and their stories for you to enjoy. The church standing in front of you was built in 1831 in the very midst of a time of turmoil in Ireland. Since 1613, with the overthrow of the Catholic leadership in the Irish Parliament, all things were dominated by a new Protestant ascendancy, with penal laws in the 1600s and 1700s banning the Catholic 85% of the population from being in the government. By the 1820s and 1830s, Protestants were making major moves to convert the population to their religion. From 1830 to 1836, an informal conflict exploded called the Tithe War, over mandatory taxes of Catholic churches to be paid to the Protestant Church of Ireland. Following the 1829 Roman Catholic Emancipation Act created by the Duke of Wellington, the abandoned childhood mansion of whom we explored earlier, this payment remained and was 10% of the value of goods and produce created. Farmers were the main victim of this tax as they gave to the Catholic Church and were now taxed by both. As resentment grew, farmers teamed up with Catholic priests to not pay. On the very next year this church was built, the British government made lists and issued orders to collect. Violence broke out as police tried to enforce property seizures, but most resistance was still peaceful. However, in Kilkenny, 120 police tried to seize cattle from a priest and he organized a revolt. The constables fired on resisting farmers and killed 12, while one policeman also died. Church bells were used to organize attacks on the police as they came to seize property, and in an ambush, 14 were killed, along with three attacking farmers. 200,000 men gathered in protest of the subsequent trial of the attackers that year. Fighting continued, with 242 deaths, 1,179 robberies, 401 burglaries, 568 burnings, 280 cases of cattle maiming, 161 assaults, 203 riots, and 723 attacks on properties. The police killed another 12 and wounded 42 while collecting at one location. In 1838, the Tithe Commutation Act for Ireland passed, reducing payments by a quarter and bundling them into rent payments. Finally, in 1860, the taxes were annulled. By the time of an independent Irish free state, the domination of the Protestant ascendancy was reversed in the South, and all mixed religious marriages were made to bring up their children as Catholics, and the church was given a special place in the government. This was ended in 1970, the very same decade this church was abandoned. It was later de-roofed in 1985, and has since become a beautiful and lonely ruin. In the southern corner of the church are the foundations and a wall of an earlier church, this too likely built upon a pagan religious site as was the normal practice of the day. Nearby peat bogs where human sacrifice was often common make this even more probable.
A large arched window shows the tower at the far end. This overgrown grave in the corner is framed perfectly by an old gnarly tree and rusted fence. While the graves here are few, they are very distinct and weathered. The outer walls, windows, and entrances are sealed, so let's check this church out from above.
It sits alone in a vast sea of wheat, a lone house in the distance. As for the mysterious reasons behind the layers of buildings here, we may never know, but it is a special place to this day, if just for its peacefulness and beauty. That's it for today. Join us next time for a new exploration as we head to an abandoned Scotland. Until then. Subscribe and explore with us today.